Tonight, I'm here as a fellow South African to join in the celebrations. Got rid of my tie, got rid of my lounge shirt, and here am I with you to, to have some real happiness. Executive Director of Socioeconomic Rights Institute, Mr. Stuart Wilson, and other legal and social activists based at Surrey. I want to acknowledge and pay tribute First, I think I must, for your sake also, to the Ford Foundation for supporting Surrey. Um, I cannot resist acknowledging that when I was a young activist lawyer, much like you, Stuart Wilson, very ready to change the world, um, I was part of the Black Law Association Legal Education Center. It was funded by Ford Foundation. A bit of an irony there. We were activists wanting to destroy apartheid, and we were nicely cocooned under the, under the banner of Lawyers Association. <coughs> and the Americans, Ford gave us money for no less than 10 to 15 years. So when I see them giving you money, I must just acknowledge their role and urge them on as we, as we continue. Um, and this is so because I've now learned after many years of activism that the fight for democracy and for a just society never ends. I thought there was a cut-off point, done. And in fact, it never ends. <clears throat> I would like to acknowledge my esteemed and well-loved colleague, Zach Yakub. I must, and call him by name. I've worked next to him for many, many years. And if there was a comrade and a colleague I was close to, was him, except in Abashali Basim John Dolly. Um, and I would like to acknowledge Abashali Basim John Dolo. I did take time to explain in English what that beautiful name of our people meant, if you will remember. Um, and I want to start with. You, Mr. President, Mr. Spusiso Zikote, um, and other leaders of Abasali who may be here. And I'd, I'd want to compliment Mazuin Zimande, uh, the youth leader of Abasali, which shows that there is a pipeline of leaders well available to assume leadership roles over time. What a privilege it is um, to be invited to the special screening of the award-winning documentary, Dear Mandela. Eight awards, if my tally is correct, Stuart, this documentary has won. That is simply remarkable and a source of enormous satisfaction, and both personal and for, for our nation as a whole. I must also thank Sari for choosing to have this occasion on Constitution Hill. I work here. I, I wake up to this place. As we all know, its geography is emblematic of a long and hard fought struggle for freedom, for equality, and for human decency. And I accepted this invitation in order to salute those legal and social activists who, together with Abashali, have continued to prick our conscience about the plight of many landless and many hopeless, homeless people of our country. Since 1994, we have indeed achieved a lot. We have established an electoral democracy and put in place a number of institutions to underpin the democratic project. I do not tonight want to debate how well our democratic institutions are presently doing, nor do I want to enter into the debate whether these institutions are currently under siege. Suffice it to note that we have taken all the time and the effort to establish them. And again, let it suffice to observe that where I work, at the Constitutional Court, and indeed within the broader judiciary, 
There is a steadfast commitment to the democratic project and to the vindication of the rights and protections of those vulnerable in society. Many of us have an unwavering commitment to reach not only formal democracy, but substantive social justice in our country. Happily so, many struggles of poor and vulnerable people are fought and pursued on the ground and not only through the courts. And that is important. Grassroots and people-based movements are the best crucible of our democracy. We indebted to them and will continue to be. Properly supported, guided and led, the people themselves can and must demand answers. They can put up their plight for all to see, as Abba Shali have done. They can resist incursions into the little gains that they have already made. But above all, united grassroots movements located within communities themselves have the power to hold those who wield public authority to account for their conduct more effectively than the courts, than parliament. The story of Abashali Basim Jondola movement points to some of the severest source of our social arrangements. We have inherited significant landlessness and abundant homelessness, which is usually indicative of poverty and inequality. We must, without emotion, ask the difficult question. We must ask whether, as a collective, as a people, even at that, as a government, we have done enough to push back the boundaries of poverty in its historical as well as present form. And I'm afraid the answer must be no. In the meantime, while society grapples with the difficult questions of poverty and inequality, which are two biggest single enemies, we at the courts, I want to suggest to you, will continue to do our damnest to hold all of us to the reciprocal promises we have made to each other in our constitution. I'd like to wish all of you a wonderful viewing of Dear Mandela, which I indeed look forward to. Somebody said, you have to see it. I don't know why they think I must see it, but I'm here and I am going to see it and I look forward to the panel discussion that would follow. As I conclude, and indeed my last paragraph, I would like to wish Seri long life, but so too all other public interest entities and efforts in our country. You've heard my praise to grassroots organizations. So too, I'd like to wish Abashali Basim Jondolo movement long life. Before I sit down, I must explain though, I do not wish you long life as shack dwellers. I don't wish you long life in punery and poverty. I rather wish you victory as you resist unlawful evictions and as you march towards secured homes, communities, and a decent life. Thank you and God bless.